on to uh, the user. So here is an example. Here's what the goal that we've got. Uh, what we want to be able to do is we want to not only save the file, but also save the file name in a field uh, in the table, and then want to display a particular um, uh, show table page, for example, that will display a link, uh, the file name as a link, and then when you click on that file name, you'll be able to then see um, uh, the, the exact file being downloaded. So what I did was I went through and uh, created a, uh, an example here just to show you how that would work. And here is an example of, uh, of, of, uh, of that uh, page. So if I go ahead and click a particular file, it should open up Excel and give me a file download a dialog box. And when I click open, uh, it'll display that uh, Excel file for uh, for me. So that's what we want to accomplish over here, and show you how to how to do that. So let's go through and go go into the details and see how we can we can do this thing. So in terms of doing this thing, we want to essentially our strategy is a four four steps. Two of the steps are dealing with file upload, and two additional steps are dealing with file download. So what we want to do here is first add a file using the file upload control that is provided in IronSP Designer. We want to also add a code customization uh, to save the file name in the database. Then what we want to do is go ahead and create a download file link um, as the second part of that thing, and then go through and set uh, the link to be actually the file name um, that we have saved in the database uh, earlier. So in order to accomplish this thing, we have to have a database schema, obviously. And I'm going to show you two examples of this database schema, one in Microsoft Access and another in SQL Server. In our example today, we are going to use Microsoft Access. So here's how a table might look like. Let's say you have an attachment table. And this attachment table has four fields in it. Let's say a unique ID called attachment ID. Uh, and then you have file name, uh, which is a text field about, let's say, 255 characters or so. Uh, and then a file content field. Now, interestingly, Microsoft Access does not have a binary object uh, for a file. So what we do is we use a different binary object field that we have called OLE object. At the end of the day, it's just a binary field, so it doesn't really matter whether we use OLE object or, for that matter, any other field type that is available. But for the purpose of uh, this example, we're going to use OLE object. And then we can also add a fourth field called description. And then, of course, you can have additional fields if you so choose to. Um, the SQL Server schema looks similar to that. The only difference is that the file content is saved. This is in SQL Server 2005. Um, and and uh, it, there's a field type called image. Uh, and you can use that. And again, you know, similar to the OLE object, uh, it's just a binary field type. And that's all we're going to use. And then in terms of attachment ID, we're going to make sure that it is an identity and it's going to be automatically provided by Microsoft SQL Server so that we do not have to provide, provide, provide this. Let's go through and look at what we want to accomplish. So what I'm going to do is I have a sample application that I created which does not have uh, this uh, particular uh, code customizations done. So we'll go ahead and add that and show you how that would uh, work. So when I run, if I run this application, what I'm going to see basically is a page. This is from the, OK, so here's the page. By default, when I link up to an attachment table and uh, display this page, what I'm going to see is just a set of file names that are already stored in the database, but it does not have a particular link on there. And then if I press the Add button, what I'm going to see is essentially just the two fields of file name and description. This is the default uh, page, uh, add attachment page that IronSpeed Designer creates. And what we want to be able to do is we want to then add a field for file content and change its type to file upload. So let's go through and figure out how to do that. So first, I'm going to go back to IronSpeed Designer, select the add attachment page over here, and press the configure button. What this will allow me to do is bring up what we call the panel wizard. And you can see the file name field and the description field already added. I'm going to go ahead and add the file content field over here. And I'm going to delete the file name field because file name we are going to automatically specify or automatically set in the code behind. So all I want is the file content field over here. And I'm going to go ahead and press the Finish button. 
Now, by default, the file content field, because it is a binary field, we do not know whether that is going to be a file upload control or an image control or what. So by default, we set that to an image field. So the next step that I want to do is I want to double click this thing to open up the properties dialog box. In the case of the properties dialog box, by default, the display style is set to image. And what we want to do over here is set that to file upload here. And I can just press the OK button, and a file upload um, control shows up over here for, uh, for me. If I wanted to change the width of this thing, then I can go through and specify a size here and specify something like, let's say, 60 in order to make this wider. Now, the width will not become wider over here, but it will definitely become wider on the, on the runtime page, basically. So let's go ahead and run it just to see exactly how this page looks like. And what we are done with the first part of this thing, basically, out of the four steps. The first part being we have now added, essentially, a file upload control. So now if you look at this page, what you're going to see is the file name field has gone away, the description uh, field is there, and then there is a file content, and I have a browse button, and it allows me to open up the different things and show it, uh, show it to me here, uh, show me a browse button over here. So I can upload any file that, that I so choose, choose to. But I have to do now the second part of this thing. And the second part of the thing that I have to do is actually save the file name with the file in addition to that. So I want to piggyback uh, on, on the save and accomplish that. So how do I do that? Let's go ahead and uh, go back to our NSP designer and see how we can make that happen. When I build, the, the, when I build uh, this application, what has ha already happened is a number of uh, uh, functions have all, all already been generated in the code behind. And what I want to do is override one of the functions. And specifically, one of the functions that I want to override, I can look at it over here. And if I expand the code uh, tab, it's going to give me the list of classes that are available. One is the page class. Another is the record control class. And the third is the base record control class. The base record control class is what is the generated code. And you can see the icon reflects that, a magnifying glass, that I can only view this. While if I go into the class, the, the attachment record class, I see a plus um, icon over here, so I can add any of these functions over here. Now, normally, these functions are divided into groups, basically. The second group is where is the saving actually happens. So you can uh, override the validate method, for example, before the record is getting saved or get UI data, which is essentially retrieving the data from the user interface and saving it into the database. And then finally, uh, I can override the save data function to replace um, you know, what, what save data is doing or actually add on to it if I so need to. This particular case, what I want to do is override the get UI data. So if I select this from the uh, code menu, it's going to go ahead and paste the empty get UI data in the save class region. The save class region is section 1, and section 2 is what we recommend you do not modify. So section, this is placed in section 1, as you can see over here. So what I need to do, basically, is modify this function in order to accomplish what we want to do. Now, by default, we want to call the my base get UI data, because in that case, what we want to do is let INSP designers get UI data, generated get UI data, do exactly what it needs to do. And then we want to piggyback on top of that thing. So what we want to do is add a few additional lines of code to save the file name in addition to the file itself. So I'm going to go ahead and copy, uh, cut and paste uh, uh, some code over here from the instruction uh, Word document over here. And by the way, you will have access to this document after this webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste uh, this, uh, this code over here. I'm going to go ahead and indent that. And let's walk through this code here and see what happens. So what uh, we have a field called file content. What we are going to do is check to see if the posted file is not is nothing, meaning that there is some posted file that is available, and that the file contents, uh, which is a file upload control, posted file dot file name is specified, meaning that the user has actually selected a particular file. Now this is a regular uh, file upload control in Microsoft.NET. So the posted file is, a, uh, uh, is an attribute or is a property that is available 
uh, to you as part of the file upload control. So this is standard.net, nothing to do with specific with IronSP Designer. Then I can check to see get, get, uh, what the file name is, check to see its length is greater than zero, and also make sure that the content length is greater than zero, implying that, uh, that the file is actually bigger than zero bytes effectively. If all of those conditions are met, what I want to do is retrieve the file name into a, into a string called path, and what we want to do is strip off the if all of the directory in front of that and just maintain the, the last portion, which is the file name. So what we want to do is find the last index of the backslash character over here. And what we want to do is set me.datasource.file name to the substring that starts from the, the character after the backslash. So if I have a file name co saying c colon backslash my app backslash you know, file.txt, all I want to do is save file.txt over here. So that's what I can accomplish over here very easily and, 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 and then do that. So that's uh, effectively all I need to do. Here's step uh, two that is uh, done here. I can now go ahead and click and run. And if I do that, then it allows me to effectively save uh, this particular, uh, save, save a particular file and a file name that is attached uh, to that. So let's go through the add attachment. I'm going to go ahead and press the, the browse uh, button over uh, over here. I'll go through, and I have a lot of other uh, things over here. So let's say, for example, if I have this instructions, and I want to do the file upload and download document over here. I press the, the save button over here, and th then the file upload and download document and the file name has been saved and it is reflected on the attachment page over here. So that's how I can not only upload a file, the uploading of the file is very easy, but I also can save the file name uh, in, in the database as well. Now let's do the third and the fourth part. Let's go back to the PowerPoint over here. We're done with this file upload. We uh, overwrote the get UI data, and that's how the get UI data looks like. And then now we need to do the create the download link. So the first thing that we need to do is we already have a file name field that is displayed on the show table page. What we want to do is change that file name field to a link button so that we have an opportunity to be able to click that. Now that won't be sufficient, but that's the first part of uh, what we need to, uh, what we need to uh, do. So let's go through and do that. I'm going to go back to our speed designer over here. And now in this particular case, what we're looking at is the attachment sorry, attachment tables file. So now we're looking at this file name field. Uh, and what we want to do is double click that to bring up the properties dialog box, go to the display tab, and change it to the link, link button. At this point in time, we don't want to worry about any of the display style options or anything like that, but just change it to the link button and press OK. When I pr uh, go ahead and save, and then I have to build, what Iron Suite Designer will do is it'll automatically create the appropriate uh, functions behind the scenes uh, in order to handle the link link button. And now what I want to do is so uh, is do the fourth and last part of this thing, which is actually to retrieve the file and then display the file. So the link button is only the one aspect of it. And the second aspect of it is actually uh, uh, provide all of the data uh, that goes uh, with that. So what do I do in order to accomplish that? Again, I go back to the code looking at a, the row class, basically. And the first section is all the things that are done at initialization time when the page is done. The second section is all of the things that are done when uh, the data is being saved, like validate, get UI data, and save data, and so on. So what I want to do is, when the data is being displayed, the normal process that it goes through is a process called data bind, which is essentially taking the data from the database and binding it to the user interface control. So let's say if we have a first name field in the database, you want to be able to retrieve that from the database and bind it to a UI field. So what we want to do is override the data bind method over here. And so let's go ahead and do that. We will, of course, call the underlying data bind method. And again, this is also in section one. So this will never be overwritten once it has been created. It calls the regular my base data bind. So it let Iron Speed Designer go ahead and do, bind all of the other fields that are on the page. And we want to piggyback and do some additional work over here. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, cheat sheet over here. And then I'm going to copy the additional code necessary in order to accomplish this thing. So what we want to do over here, and I'll explain this code to you in a minute.
what we want to do over here is check to make sure that uh, the first uh, step is we want to check to make sure that if the data source is nothing returned, meaning that you know data bind may be called in instances where you have not read the record from the database yet, in which case, so this is just uh, good error checking that you, you would want to, want to do. Next thing that we want to do is make sure that the file name for the file name field is specified already as the file, uh, file uh, name from the database. And that's how you set the user interface field, which is a literal file name dot text, to the data from the database. You just use me.datasource.file name. Finally, what we want to do is if the user clicks the particular uh, link, we want to add an on-client click. And again, an on-client click is a standard .NET uh, attribute that is specified on a literal. And what it allows you to do effectively is specify a little bit of a JavaScript code, in which case what we want to do is open a window with an, what's a, a standard uh, page that we provide called export field value, which allows you to take the name of the database, name of the, the, the field. By, by default, the file content is not going to be retrieved and displayed on the particular page, because the file content could be many megabytes or gigabytes large. So what we want to do is only display a link, and only when the user clicks that, we want to retrieve that uh, record from the database and then display that. So the export field value function allows you to do exactly that. And it takes a number of parameters. The number of parameters it takes are an the name of the table, in this case attachment, the name of the field, in this case file content, the name of the, uh, the record ID, basically. And we're going to use the get ID function in order to retrieve that. And then the name of the file name as well in order to open up the right application. Those are the four parameters it takes. What it also does is it makes sure that it, it takes encrypted values. And the reason for that is we don't want users or hackers to go in and essentially type in anything that they want uh, with respect to if they know the name of the table, the name of the field, or the name of the record, they may be able to retrieve all of the data from your database. So we don't want them to do that. So what we do is export field value only accepts encrypted values. And they are encrypted with uh, the standard encryption uh, code that is available in every Iron Speed Designer application, and it is uh, cannot be uh, cannot be hacked. So that's what we do here. We encrypt all of the values, in term, including the table name, including the file content, as well as the get ID, and then and then the file name. And we just open up a little window in order to display that. So that's all I need to do. And now go ahead and save this and run. And what this will allow me to do is show a particular link here. And if I did everything right, all the links will show up. And if I were to click that, uh, it'll open up uh, the appropriate uh, document. So there you have it. Now I now see the all as link. And all of these items are window open. So now, if you remember, I had file upload and download that I added. So I click that. It gives me a file open do uh, dialog box. I click open. And sure enough, it uh, should open up. Looks like I already have it open, so that's why it's Okay, it's going to open up another document over here, there, and there you have it.